This episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Imagine you're sitting down to lunch and you order a sausage roll. Though when it arrives, it's accompanied by an unusual message. Many animals, pigs and cows, were slaughtered, suffered a cruel and horrible death and felt pain to provide the meat for your lunch. So, do you still eat it? And why? On the outside, the whole situation is just uncomfortable. You want to eat meat, but you also think that animal torture is immoral. On the inside, your brain is freaking out. This psychological conflict between people's dietary preferences for meat and their response to animal suffering is known as the meat paradox. And your response to the meat paradox can tell you some pretty interesting things about how you make decisions. Now think back to the sausage roll dilemma and why you potentially still ate it. You might say, It's already on my plate. What am I going to do? Or, Humans are a super predator and we're meant to eat meat and we're just doing our part in the game of natural selection. But Dr. Julia Shaw would call, Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that is the ultimate, ultimate cop out for trying to outsource morality and say meat eating is not so bad. Now, Dr. Shaw is a researcher associate at University College London and the author of the new book Evil where I first read about the meat paradox. So naturally I wanted to come and speak with her to understand why we often repeat behaviours that are harmful either to ourselves or to others or to animals. The meat paradox is the inconsistency between our belief that animals are cute and we need to protect them and we probably shouldn't torture them and on the other hand eating them and turning them into meat and in the process putting them in factory farms and torturing them in various ways and so clearly these two beliefs are inconsistent with each other and that's what we call cognitive dissonance is that we hold two beliefs at the same time and the paradox lies in the middle now it's helpful to take a step back and understand where this idea of cognitive dissonance came from the idea behind cognitive dissonance actually came from a study in the 60s by someone called Festinger, who took participants and made them take spools and put them in a tray. And then he had participants fill the tray with spools, and then he had them dump them back out and do it again. So back in, back out, back in, back out. And so he made them do these really boring tasks. And the idea was that they would, after they did this really boring task, go to the next participant, say that it was a really fun study, and then they would get either paid $1 or they'd get paid $20 to say this lie. So either you can say, I got paid 20 pounds and so it was fine. And so I'm the reason I said it, the reason I said it was an enjoyable task is because I got paid money for it. And so I don't need to change how I felt about it. But if you only got paid one pound, and instead that's not enough to make you feel like that excuse is lying. You instead, and this is what he found, uh, change how you feel about the task. And you instead think that, you know what? Putting spools into trays and taking them out, fine. I actually had a pretty good time. And so what's happened is that you've had this cognitive dissonance between these two things that you, the thing you didn't like to do is saying you liked it and you had to bring them in alignment somehow. And so he called this ex experience of having these two inconsistent beliefs, cognitive dissonance. And this inconsistent behavior happens in lots of other areas. I like when we buy fast fashion. So on the one hand, we think that it's not okay to uh, underpay people or to put people in really dangerous working conditions. And yet we show up at cheap shops and we buy things that are really cheap just because of the price tag. Um, so there's that. And then there's other more complicated things like, like porn, where on the one hand, it's not okay to pay someone to have sex with you, but porn is legal in many countries where prostitution is not. So there's a lot of inconsistencies on very low levels, but also on more extreme or more severe levels um, that really point to questions as to how do we deal with this as human beings? How do we deal with these inconsistencies? Now back to the meat paradox. And so what we need to do is either we need to excuse meat eating by saying it's okay because we need it, it's okay because it's culturally something, it's something we do, or we need to be vegan and actually be consistent with our cute animals approach and say, you know what? It's not okay to turn animals into meat because they're cute. And so you're consistent in your actions and your thoughts. What does our response to the meat paradox say about ourselves? 
I think it shows that we are often deeply inconsistent in our morality. I think that meat is one good example where there's lots of excuses. We're constantly telling ourselves a story that it's okay to do so because everybody else is doing it because there's this industry and it's not our problem. Um, and I think it's it's just reflected on in so many ways on in, in other industries. And so we just need to be very, very careful that we again, at least accept the fact that we're being hypocritical and don't get angry, for example, when someone challenges us and says, if there are problems with that behavior, uh, instead that we actually reflect on it. And then if it is inconsistent, that ideally we do change our behavior more in line with our deeper moral compass. And we stop, for example, eating as many animal products. We stop polluting the planet like crazy. We stop buying cheap clothes just because of the price tag. So at this point, you may be thinking, who cares? Or what do I do now? If you can modify your behaviors to bring them more in line with your moral beliefs, great. But the most achievable thing that you can do is to not criticize other people who behave against those beliefs. We're fantastic at creating these post hoc excuses for our own behavior, but we still remain highly critical of other people's behavior. There is no solution to the meat paradox, but there is a message wrapped up in the sausage roll. We're all inconsistent beings and when we can't behave better we can be more understanding of others and treat them better. So be nice. Now a few years ago I watched this New Zealand documentary called The Science of Us that's about this huge longitudinal study in Dunedin. The findings from it were so interesting I actually think about it all of the time and I'm stoked to find out it's now available on CuriosityStream who is the sponsor of today's video. They're a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries, non-fiction titles and originals from some of the world's best filmmakers. Unlimited access starts at $2.99 a month but for BrainCraft viewers, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash braincraft and use the promo code braincraft during the sign up process. Thanks. As always, a big thank you to everyone who supports Braincraft on Patreon, including my top tier patrons, Patrick Olson, Jack Tabor, Jason Schoenberg and Per Anders Farberg. See you next time.